pleasant morning to everyone, especially to our dear instructor, Sir Alvin Mahawan, and to my classmates. So I am Christine Mansahin, your next discussant for the topic assigned to me. So I am going to talk about the atomic structure of an atom, or the structure of an atom, the formation of spectral lines, as well as the Doppler effect. So first, we are going to talk about the structure of an atom. So when we say atom, it is the tiniest particle of a, of a matter and it is composed of neutron, electron, and proton. So first, we have the modern atomic theory. So all matter is composed of atoms. Atoms cannot be subdivided, created, or destroyed in just an ordinary chemical reactions. However, these changes can occur in nuclear reactions. So Machi change lang natin yung atom, yung form yung um, structures ng atom, especially if it is being um, applied by such nuclear reactions. So atoms of an element have a characteristic average mass which is unique to that element. So every every element has the has their definite or has the their unique um, atomic masses. So atoms of any one element differ in properties from atoms of another element. So whereas an element, what no two elements that have the same atom composition. So magkaiba, kaya the element is magkaiba ang kanilang atom composition. So let's have the structure of the atom. So sabi ko kanina, an atom is composed of proton, electron, and neutron. So when we see proton, it is the positively charged um, and found in the nucleus. So, an unit, unit of measure ninda or ang atomic mass unit na ginagamit sa mga proton, electron, and neutron is the AMU or the approximate mass of a proton of I or a neutron. Then, we have the neutron or the neutral charge, na zero ang iasin charge, then one AMU and found also in nucleus. And however, the electron or the negatively charged or Ang mass nila is very small and we all know naman na yung mga electron is ada siya sa sa bilog siya sa nucleus kag dili siya um dili siya ada sa sulod sang nucleus So considering the um discovery of this the atomic structure so may mga may mga scientists and physicists behind this So let's have first the GG Thomson or uh the one or the scientist or the physicist that discovered first the electron. So, um, he was the first scientist and British physicist to show that the atom is made up, made up of even smaller things. Then, it is, it is the electron na gina, gina point niya didi is the electron. So, this particle is negatively charged. So, when we say nga, electron is the negatively charged. It is the flow of this particle that produces currents of electricity. So, ada siya sa atoms in mga electricity, lightning bolts, lightning bolts, and even sa aton um, leading to our lamps, sa aton mga wires na ada sa aton mga ilaw. Because an atom in its normal state is electricity neutral. Each electron in an atom must be balanced by the same amount of positive charge. So, kung pila yung um, presence sa negatively charged na atom, ganun dapat yung positively charged para um, ano sila, in an balance in the. Okay. So, para sa pag-discover ni Gigi Thompson sa na, na electron niya, ang ginamit niya na, um, ang ginamit niya sa pag-discover is the cathode ray tube. So, ang an pictures ang cathode ray tube ada sa, ada sa pictures, ang magpainit siya. So, maliban kay Gigi Thompson, may iba pa na mga scientist na naghatag man san in the um, ideas and opinions kag san in the mga san effort ninda na para uh, maging mas uh, mas maayos pa or mas um, successful pa and and pag himo ninda sa atomic structure so we have also the rather rather for his contribution to the atomic theory si Ernest Rutherford so para naman sa iya the atom is mostly empty space so what an unod the nucleus is a small dense core with a positively charged 
So, yun. Para kay Ernest Rutherford, ang nucleus daw is gamay lang siya, then um, full lang siya sa positively charged na, ato- na atom. So, the next step was to determine where the atom and the pa- where the atom, the positive and the negative charge are located. So, in 1911, British physicist Ernest Rutherford devised an experiment that provided part of the answer to the question. So, he bombarded an extremely thin piece of gold foil. So, gold foil naman ang ginamit niya. Kung kanina kay Gigi Thompson is the cathode ray tube, sa iyan naman is gold foil. So, only about 400 atoms thick with a beam of alpha particles. So, the alpha particles or A particles are helium atoms atoms that have lost their electrons and thus are positively charged. So, so ang al- alpha alpha atom ninda or alpha particles nila as the positively charged. So, most of these particles pass through the gold foil just as if as if it and the atom in it were nearly empty space. So, about 1 in 8,000 of the alpha particles. So, grabe ang iasin um, um, ratio is 1 oh, in 8,000 alpha particles. However, completely li- reverse direction and bounce backward from the foil. Rather, for the road, it was quite the most incredible event that has this, that has ever happened to me in my life. So, yun, ang pag, um, pag-discover niya sa to, using the gold foil, amo daw yung pinaka um, incredible, most incredible part daw na, na nangyari sa buhay niya. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15 inches uh, shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. So, yun, yun ang explanation niya sa pag-discover niya sa to na alpha particles na ang ginamit niya is gold foil. So, yun. So, ada sa next slide ang iya um, ang illustration sa iya sa experiment using the gold foil. So, yun. Ang gold foil niya, may detecting screen, may slit, and particle emitter. So, yan. So, rather for its gold foil experiment. So, may radioactive source, may alpha rays, then spherical detector, and the gold foil. So, yan yung um, pagkakasunod-sunod ng kanyang Uh, ginawang experiment or ang nagiging uh, result sa niya sinhimo. Then, after sa niya experiment, so, nagimo siya sin conclusion. So, the atom is mostly empty space daw. Para sa kanya, ang atom is mostly empty space. Then, there is a small dense center with a positive charge. So, merong part daw yung atom na, na small din denser siya kag ano siya san positively charged then rather for discovered the nucleus in the atom so yung 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 kanyang ang ginamit niya dito na uh, small dense at the center is the nucleus of an atom so yun discover siya nang discover sa nucleus of an atom so the only way to account for the particles that reverse direction when they hit the gold foil was to assume that nearly all of the mass as well as all the positively charged and each individual gold atom is concentrated in a tiny center of nucleus. So when a positively charged alpha particle strikes a nucleus, it reverses direction much as a cue ball reverses direction with, it, with which is it, it strikes another billiard ball. So rather for its model placed the other type of charge the negatively charged electrons in orbit around this nucleus so yun explanation ni Ernest Rutherford so Rutherford's model required that the electron to be in a motion positive and negative charge attract each other so stationary electrons would fall into the positive positive nucleus so also because both the electrons and the nucleus are extremely small so most of the atom is empty which is why Nearly all of the Rutherford's particles were able to pass right through the gold foil without colliding. So, wala siya nag-collide with anything. So, yun. Rutherford's model was very successful explanation. So, siya ang pinaka-successful explanation sa experiment he conducted. Although, eventually, scientists could discover that even the nucleus itself has a structure. So, sa tanan na, na, na discovery, ang kay Ernest Rutherford ay yung pinaka-successful Um, experiment na nabuo. So, yun na yung para kay Ernest Rutherford. 
na ang iya sin discovery ang um, pinaka successful explanation na um, na nabuo then we have the atomic nucleus so um di ba si Ernest Rutherford ang nag discover sa nucleus so we are going to discuss also the atomic nucleus so the simplest possible atom and, and the most common one in the sun and stars in hydro is hydrogen so ang um, pinaka simplest um atom na ada sa so sun and star is the hydrogen so the nucleus of ordinary hydrogen contains a single proton so we all know naman na ang atomic numbers and um ang atomic numbers and hydrogen is one so it also pertains to the um to the number of proton sun said na element so moving around this proton is a single electron so single electron din siya so the mass of the electron is nearly 2000 times smaller than the mass of a proton so the electron carriers and carries an amount of charge exactly equal to that of the proton but opposite in sign so same lang sila sin same lang sin the sin um proton and electron magkaiba lang sa sign so kay an proton nga ni is positive and electron is negative so opposite charges attracts each other so parang sa magnet din siya diba pa nan nagaano siya naga attract sinda kasi may negative and positively charge then so it is an electromagnetic force so yun na nga that holds the proton and electron together so amo yung nag attract sa kanila yung electromagnetic um force na present sa kanila just as gravity is the force that keeps planet in orbit around the sun so pareho din siya sa gravitation gravitational force na amo ay nag naguuyot or siya yung nag hold ng planet around the sun so yun so, there are many other types of atoms in nature. So, helium, for example. So, ang helium naman or the HE. So, for example, is the second most abundant element in the sun. So, siya naman ang pinaka uh, second abundant element sa sun. Kasi ang una is the hydrogen. So, helium has two protons in its nucleus instead of a single proton. Dua naman ang yasin protons that characterizes the hydrogen. So, in addition, the helium um, nucleus contains two neutrons, particles with a mass comparable to that of the proton, but with no electric charge. So, igwa naman siya sin duwan na neutron na um, wala siya sin charge. Moving around this nucleus are two electrons so that total net charge of the helium at atom is is also zero. So, um, ang iya sin neutron is two, ang iya electron is two, and it has also the um two protons so yun ang total ni charge niya is zero so the ratio of neutrons to protons increases as the number of protons increases but each element is unique so when the number of protons daw kung ang positively charged niya is um in ga increase ga increase man ang iya sin neutron so kada kada element is magkaiba ang kanilang ratio kasi unique yung kada element so the number of neutrons is not necessarily the same for all atom of a given element. So, for example, most hydrogen atoms contains no neutrons at all. So, one neutrons and hydrogen. There are, however, hydrogen atoms that contains one proton and one neutron, and others that contain one proton and two neutrons. So, may igumando sin one neutron, one proton, then one proton, two neutrons. So, the various types of hydrogen nuclei with different numbers of neutrons are called isotopes of hydrogen. So, yun ang isotope of hydrogen ang siya ay um, different number of of um, neutrons so and all other elements have isotope as well as well so tanan na aw, ang iba pa na mga elements may isotopes man sila so yun you can think of isotopes as siblings in the same element or family closely related but with different characteristics and behaviors so yun yung um, isotopes na ginasabi may igo sila sing anan belong sila sa one family pero magkakaiba ang in the scene um characteristics and behaviors but they are also closely related yan so yang sa illustration yun one h hydrogen the deuterium and the tritium so yun yun yung kanilang um um illustrations so let's come now to the Bohr atom. 
So Rutherford's model for atom has one serious problem. Maxwell's theory of electromagnetic radiation says that when electrons change either speed or the dire direction of motion, they must emit energy. Orbiting electrons constantly change their direction of motion, so they should emit a constant stream of energy. Applying Maxwell's theory to Rutherford's model, all electrons should spiral into the nucleus of an atom as they lose energy and this collapse should happen very quickly, in about 10 to 16 seconds. It was Danish physicist Niels Bohr, so si Niels Bohr naman siya, 1885-1962, who solved the mystery of how electrons remain in orbit. So, si Niels Bohr naman siya. Siya naman yung nag-discover saan, siya naman yung concern naman sa discovery saan, um, electrons. So, he was trying to, aw, ano lang siya, concern lang siya, pero dili siya talaga yung uh, nag-discover, nag-discover. So, siya ang nag-solve sa mystery how electrons remain in orbit sa orbit naman siya so he was trying to develop a model of an atom that would also explain certain regularities observed in a spectrum of hydrogen he suggested that the spectrum of hydrogen can be understood if we assume that orbits of only certain sizes are possible for the electron so Bohr um, further assumed that as long as the electron moves only one of these allowed orbits it radiates no energy. So, its energy would change only if it moved from one orbit to another. So, this suggestion, uh, in the words of science historian Abraham Pius, was one of the most audacious hypotheses. So, amarito siyang pinaka uh, audacious hypothesis. So, ever introduced, introduced in physics. If something equivalent were at work in the everyday world, you might find that, as you went for a walk after astronomy class, nature permitted you to walk 2 steps per minute, 5 steps per minute, and 12 steps per minute, but no speeds in between. So, yun. No matter how you tried to move your legs, only certain walking speeds would be permitted. To make these things more bizarre, it would take no effort to walk at any one of the allowed speeds but it would be difficult to change from one speed to another so in Bohr's model if the electron moves from one orbit to another closer to the atomic nucleus it must give up some energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation so yun electromagnetic radiation naman siya ang form niya if the electron goes from inner orbit to one another to one farther from the nucleus however it requires some additional energy so pag kumali naman siya sa uh, more farther siya sa nucleus it requires some additional energy. One way to obtain the necessary energy is to absorb electromagnetic radiation that may be streaming past the atom from the outside source. So, yun. So, a key feature of Bohr's model is that each of the permitted electrons orbits around a given atom has a certain energy, energy value. So, we therefore can think of each orbit as an energy level. To, to move from one orbit to another, which will have its own specific energy value, requires a change in electrons' energy, a charge, a change determined by the difference between the two energy values. So if the electron goes to a lower level, the energy difference will be given off. So if the electron goes to a higher level, the energy difference must be obtained from somewhere else. So each jump to a different level has a fixed and definite energy change associated with it so a crude analogy for the situation might be life in a tower of luxury apartments where the rent is determined by the quality of the view so yun um so in atom 2 the cheapest place for an electron to live in the lowest possible and level the energy is required to move to a higher level so her level her moves a higher level, it absorbs a photon of just the right energy provided one in available. So when it moves to a lower level, it emits a photon with the exact number of energy. It no longer needs an its lower cost living situation. So the photon uh, amount of energy that is proportional to the frequency or f of the wave is represented by the, by, by the value of its energy E is given by the formula. So my formula is some fine sound. Pag-finds an amount of energy. 
So, my formula siya in finding the amount of energy. So, ang formula is E is equal to HF, where, where the constant of proportionality H is called Planck's constant. So, constant na yung H or given na yung H. Then, we are going to find the amount of energy. Then, the E is the energy given. Tapos, and F is the frequency. So, the constant name for Max Planck, the German physicist who was one of the originators of the quantum theory. So, siya rin ang usad sa mga originators in quantum theory. If metric units are used, that is, if energy is measured in joules and frequency in hertz. So, ano yan naman sin, um, um, unit is in joules and frequency in hertz. So, when Planck's constant has the value, and, and values in kay Planck sin um, h, is 6.626 times 10 minus 30 full joules per second. So, yun. Higher energy, 6 626 times 10 raised to, negative, raised to 34 joules per second. So, again, and values and edge niya is 6.626 times 10 raised to negative 34 joules per second. So, higher energy photons correspond to higher frequency waves, which have a shorter wavelength, and lower energy photons are waves of lower frequency. So, to take a specific example, consider a calcium atom inside the sun's atmosphere in which an electron jumps from a lower level to higher level. To do this, it needs about 5 times 10 raised to negative 19 joules of energy which it can be conveniently obtained by observing a passing photon of that energy coming from deeper inside the sun. So this photon is equivalent to a wave of light was frequently is about 7 times 5 ti 7.5 times 10 raised to 14 hertz and whose wavelength is about 3.9 times 10 raised to negative 7 meters or 300 man nanometers, 393 nanometers. So, in the violet part of the visible light spectrum. So, although it may seem strange at first to switch from picturing light as a photon or energy packet to, to picturing it as a wave, such switching has become second nature to astronomers and can be a handy tool for doing cal calculations about spectra. So the energy photon, the energy of a photon, now that we know how to calculate the wavelength and frequency of a photon, we can use the information along with Planck's constant to determine how much energy each photon carries. So, so let's have the first um, uh, example. How much energy does a red photon of wavelength 630 nanometer have? So this is, uh, the solution is, is given. We are going to... We are going to calculate the energy of a re red photon with with a wavelength of 630 nanometer. So first, as we learned early, earlier, we can find the frequency of the photon. So I'm going to give a um, formula. So F is equal to C then over is equal to 3 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second over 630 times 10 raised to negative 9 meter is equal to 4.8 times 10 raised to 14 hertz. So next we can use Planck's constant to determine the energy. Remember that H is, Hz is the same as 1 over 1 per second. So E is equal to HF is equal to 6.626 times 10 raised to negative 34 joules per second. Then, so given na siya ang H, di ba? Constant na siya. Then times 4.8 times 10 raised to 14. So ang na-find nato na siya sa taas. Hertz over, uh, hertz times 1 over seconds is equivalent to 3.2 times 10 raised to negative 19 joules. So yun given na siya. Then we have another um, example. Uh, what is the energy of a yellow photon with the frequency of 5.5 times 10 raised to 14 hertz? So given na siya yung frequency, given na rin, na rin yung constant na rin yung h. So we are going just to find the energy. So yun, i-multiply lang natin sila and we come up with the answer of 3.6 times 10 raised to negative 19 joules. So, yun. 
So let's proceed now to the second um, lesson. We have the formation of spectral lines. So the learning objectives by the end of the section, you will be able or we the students are able to explain how emission line spectra and absorption line spectra are formed. Describe what ions are and how they are formed. Explain how spectral lines and ionization levels in a gas can help us determine its temperature for the electron orbits in an atom leads naturally to an explanation of why atoms absorb or emit only specific energies of wavelengths of light. So a photon of wavelength 656 nanometers has just the right energy to raise an electron and an hydrogen atom from the second to the third orbit. Thus, as all the photons of different energies or wavelengths of color stream by the hydrogen atoms, photons with this particular wavelength can be absorbed by those atoms whose electrons are orbiting or the second level. So when they absorb the electrons on the second level, we move, will move to the third level and a number of photons of this wavelength and energy will be missing from the general stream of white light. So other photons will have the right energies to raise electrons from the second to the first orbit or from the first to the fifth orbit, orbit and so on. So only photons with this exact energies can be absorbed. All of the other photons would stream past in atoms untouched. So thus hydrogen atoms absorb light at only certain wavelengths and produce dark lines at those with wavelengths in the spectrum we see. So suppose so suppose we have a container of hydrogen gas through which a whole series of photons is passing, allowing many electrons to move up to higher levels. When we turn off the light source, these electrons fall back down from larger to smaller orbits and emit photons of light. But again, only light of those energies of wavelengths that correspond to the energy difference between permissible orbits. So the orbital changes of hydrogen electrons that give rise to some spectral lines are shown in the picture. So yun, my blue green spectral line siya, my electron orbit and the red spectral line. So then meron din siya violet spectral line. So yun. So the energy levels and excitation. Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom was a great step forward in our understanding of the atom. However, we know today that atoms cannot be represented by quite so simple a picture. For example, the concept of sharply defined electron's orbits is not really correct. However, at the level of this introductory course, the notion that only certain discrete energies are allowable for the atom is very useful. So the energy levels we have been discussing can be thought as of representing certain average distances of the electron's possible orbit orbits from the atomic nucleus. Ordinarily, an atom is in, is in the state of lowest possible energy, its ground state. In the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, the ground state corresponds to the electron being and the innermost orbit. So the, an atom can absorb energy, which raises it to the higher level energy level, corresponding in a simple Bohr picture to the electron's movement to a larger orbit. This is referred to an excitation. So, yun, excitation siya when an atom can absorb energy and raise raises it to the higher energy level. So, yun, ang, ibis, ang tawag dun is excitation. So, the atom is then said to be in an excited state. So, generally, the, an atom remains excited for only a very brief time. After a short interval, typically 100 million of the second or so, it drops back spontaneously to its ground state with a simultaneous emission of light. So the atom may return to its lowest state in one jump or it may take, it, it may make the transition in steps of two or more jumps stopping at intermediate levels of the way down. With each jump, it emits a photon of the wavelength that corresponds to the energy difference between the levels of the beginning and the end at every jump. So yun, ito yung illustration niya, the Balmer series absorption, the Lehman, Lyman series or the emission, and the Paskin series emission. So yun, n is equal 5, equals 4, n is equals 3, n equals 2, n equals 1, then energy. So yun, ito yun, bracket series, Paskin series, the Balmer series, and the Lehman series, the letter B. So my follow-up siya na explanations about this. 
So in here we follow. So sa first uh, diagram na pinakita natin, we follow the emission of absorption of photons by the hydrogen atom according to the Bohr's model. So several several different series of spectral lines are shown, corresponding to transition of electrons from one or two certain uh, allowed orbits. Each series of lines that terminates on a specific inner orbit is named for the physicist who is to who studied it? At the top, for example, you see the Balmer series. So, sa taas, magkita natin yung Balmer series. That arrow and arrows shows electron jumping from the second orbit. So, n equals 2. So, to the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth orbits. So, each time in poor electron from a lower, um, lower level wants to rise to a higher position in life. So, it must absorb energy to do so. It can absorb the energy it needs from the passing waves. For of or photons of light. So the next set of arrows, so the Lyman series, show electrons falling down to the first orbit from different higher levels. So each time a rich electron goes downward toward the nucleus, it can afford to give off or emit some energy it no longer needs. No longer needs. So the letter B naman at higher and higher level energy levels, the levels become more and more um, crowded together, approaching to a limit. To a limit. So the region above the top line represents energy at which the atom is ionized. The electron is no longer attached to the atom. So each series of atoms or arrows represents electrons falling from higher level to lower one. So yun ang arrow, pwede pa pababa siya. So releasing photons or waves of energy in the process. So yun. As they um as they fall, uh, as the arrows um goes down or falling down, so it um releases photons of energy or waves. So, yun. Yun yung nasa pictures na or the illustration na given yung letter A and letter B illustrations. So, atoms have that have absorbed specific photons from a passing beam of light and have thus become excited, generally de excite themselves and emit that light again in a very short time. So, you might wonder then why dark spectral lines are ever produced. In other words, why doesn't this emitted light quickly fill in and darker absorption light? So, yung mga dark color or yung mga dark spectral lines um, naga emit sila sa mga light quick fill in dark absorption lines. So, atoms in a hot gas are moving at high speeds and continually colliding with one another and with any loss electrons, they can be excited. So, electrons moving to a higher level and be excited. Electrons moving to a lower level. So, yung mga excited electrons moving higher level and and the excited naman ng mga uh, electrons is, excuse me, moving to a lower level. So, by this collision as well as by absorbing and emitting light. So, the speed of atoms in a gas depends on the temperature. So, yung speed ng atoms naman is depending on the temperature. So, when the temperature is higher, so the speed and the energy, uh, the speed and the energy of the collision. So, the hotter the gas, therefore, the more likely that electrons will occupy the outermost orbits which corresponds to the highest energy level. So this means that the level where electrons start their upward jumps in a gas can serve as an indicator of how hot and that gas is. So in this way, the absorption lines in a spectrum gives astronomers information about the temperature of the region where the lines originated. So yun, yung nasa picture yung um, series of continuous spectrum. So, so yung light, light siya, yung yellow light. Yung continuous spectrum siya, naga ano siya. My arrow, then cloud gas. Um, my arrow is the continuous spectrum dark lines, then to bright line spectrum. So, yun, yung picture. Given yung picture. Yung illustration pala. Yan. So, next we have the ionization. So, we have described how certain discrete amounts of energy can be absorbed in an atom, raising it to the excited state and moving one of its electrons farther from its knock loose so it it enough energy if enough energy is absorbed the electron can be completely removed from the atom so kung enough yung energy na absorbed ng um ng electron or ng atom so the electron can be completely removed from the atom this is called ionization so the removing of um electron in the atom is called ionization so the atom is then said to be ionized so yung ion is ma yung ion yung atom is ionized so the minimum amount of energy required to remove one electron from the atom is it, in its ground state is called its ionization energy. So yung e, yung ano naman siya, yung energy naman na required na para na para ma-remove yung isang electron sa atom is called ionization energy. Then yung process ng pag-remove is the 
is the ionization. Then, yung, yung result naman, sang, sang, yung atom naman na, na, na pinagkuna ng, ng electron is called the ionized atom. So, still greater amounts of energy must be absorbed than by the now ionized atom called an ion. So, yung ionized atom niya is ionization tawag. So, to remove an additional electron deeper in the structure of the atom, successively greater energy energies are needed to remove the third, fourth, fifth, and so on electrons from the atom. So, if enough energy is available, the atom can become completely ionized, losing all of its electron. So, pag completely ionized na siya, so wala na siya ang electron na mabibilin. So, a hydrogen atom having one, only one electron to lose can be ionized only once. So, kung maigulang siya sa atom na usad na lang, or usad lang na, na a, atom niya, usad lang na atom niya yung ma-ionized, ma or, oh, so... Um, ma-ionize siya only once. So, a helium atom can be ionized twice. So, twice yung helium kasi yung, yung atom niya present niya is or electron niya is dua. Uh, and an oxygen atom up to 8 times. So, yun. 8 times kasi yung um, electron na present sa oxygen. When we examine regions of the cosmos where they, there are greater deal of energetic radiation, so such as the neighborhoods where hot young stars have recently formed, we see a lot of ionization going on. So, yun. Yun yung about sa ionization, um, ionization process. So, so yung ionization is the completely remo removing of electron in an atom. Then, yung atom naman na pinagkunin ng, ng electron is called ionized. Then, yung ang ionized atom na is called the ion. Then, the energy or the energy required in removing that electron from the atom is called the ionization energy. So, yun yung concept sa ionization process. So, an atom that has become positively ionized has lost a negative charge to the missing electron and thus is left with a net positive charge. So, yung nakuan siya, yung nakuna ng um, positively, uh, uh, yung negatively charged yung uh, nakuha niya so, magkakaroon siya ng missing electron. So, and that is left with a net charge, positively net charge. If it therefore exerts a strong attraction on any free electron, so eventually one or more electrons will capture and the atom will become neutral or ionized to one less degree again. So, during the electron capture process, the atom emits one of the more, more protons. So, when which protons are emitted depends on we on whether the electron is captured at once to the lowest energy level of the atom so, or it stops at one or more intermediate levels in its way to the lowest available level. level. So just as the excitation of an atom can result from a collision with another atom, ion or electron collisions will, with electrons are usually most important, so can ionization. So the rate of at which such collisional ionization occur depends on the speed of the atoms and hence on the temperature of the gas the hotter the gas the more the atoms it will be ionized so the rate of which ions and electrons recombine also depends on their relative speeds that is on the temperature so in addition it depends on the density of the gas the higher the density the greater the chance to recapture so because the different kinds of particles are crowded more closely together from a knowledge once twice and so on so in the sun for example we find that most of the hydrogen and helium atoms in its atmosphere are neutral whereas most of the calcium atoms as well as many other heavier atoms are ionized once the energy levels of the ionized atoms are entirely different from those of the same atom when it is neutral. So each time an electron is removed from the atom, the energy levels of the ion and thus the wavelengths of the spectral lines, it can produce charge or change. This helps astronomers differentiate the ions of given element. So the hydrogen having no electron can produce no So that is all about the ionization process. So we come now to the Doppler effect. So motion affects waves. So, yes, we all know that motion affects, really affects waves. So, in 1842, Christian Doppler first measured the effect of motion on waves by hiring a group of musicians to play on an open railroad car as it was moving along the track. So, he then applied what he learned to all waves, so in, um, including lights, and pointed out that if a light source is approaching or receding from the observer, the light waves will be respectively crowded more closely together or spread out. So the general principle known known as the Doppler effect. So yun. Yung, yung ano siya, yung um, information about the light source or the wave 
from the light source ko, no, is approaching or receding from the observer so the light waves will be respect respectively crowded more closely together or spread out so yung tawag dun na process naman is the Doppler effect and it was being formulated by Christian Doppler in 1842 so yun so next slide yung ano yung illustration and Doppler effect na ginawa niya so the to observer so letter A to observer then so letter B illustration is to observer A then to observer C and to observer observer B so yun yung mga uh, may mga numbers number siya na illustration so we can see from this illustration that the Doppler effect is produced only by motion toward or away from the observer so, emotion called radial velocity. So, yung ano naman siya, yung motion naman toward or away. Yung motion naman siya na napoproduce na kung saan siya yung responsible to move um, to move the observer of, or to move uh, something toward or away from the observer. Ang, ang motion naman siya is called the radial velocity. So, sideways motion does not produce such an effect. So, observers between A and B would observe some shortening of the light waves for the part of the motion of the source it's along their line or side. So observers between B and C would observe light lengthening of the light waves that are along their line of sight. So you you may be heard the Doppler effect with sound waves. When a train whistle or police sirian approaches you and then moves away, you will notice decrease in the pitch, which is how human senses interpret sound waves frequency of the sound waves. So compared to the waves at rest, they have changed from slightly more frequent when coming toward you. So to slightly less frequent when moving away from you. So yun. Yung Doppler effect is um in example na din yung um train whistle or the police siren that approaches us. Tapos di ba pag malapit na po sila, we tend to move away or then to when we move away uh, so when yung train whistle or repulse screen moves away from us so na, napapansin natin na humihina din yung um, pitch or that uh, sound yung sound na, na, na nababati natin kasi um, as as the distance are um, increasing siya so yung pitch or the volume na mahihir natin is nagalasan din siya ya, din yun so yun yung parang um, sa na application sa Doppler effect then we have the color shift so color shift so when the source of the wave move towards you the wavelength decreases a bit so yun na nga kung um, kung ang waves daw is towards us so the wavelength is decreases a bit so if the waves involved are visible light then the colors of the light changes slightly so as the wavelength decreases they shift toward the blue and end of the spectrum so astronomers call it the blue shift since the end of the spectrum is really violet the term should probably be violet shift but blue in more common color so when the series move away from you and the wavelength gets longer we call the change in color colors a red shift so read shift naman siya because the Doppler effect was first uh, used with visible light in astronomy so the terms blue shift and red shift became well established so today astronomers use these words to describe changes in the wavelengths of radio waves or x-rays as comfortably as they use them to describe changes in the visible light so the greater the motion towards earth away from us the greater the Doppler effect or the Doppler shift. If the relative motion is entirely along the light of sight, the formula for Doppler shift of light is so you and given a formula so is equal to V over C. So where yung parang ganon yung symbol is the wavelength emitted by the source as a difference between between that sign and the wavelength measured by the observer so c is the speed of light and v is the rel relative speed of the observer in the source in the line or of sight so the variable v is counted as positive if the velocity is one is one of the recession and negative is one of the approach solving this equation for the equation for the velocity we find v is equal to c then yun so let's consider the example 5.6 so the Doppler effect. We can use the Doppler effect equation to calculate the radial velocity of the object if we know three things, the speed of light, the original and shifted wavelength, 
of the light emitted and the difference between the wavelength of the emitted light and the wavelength we observe. For a particular absorption of emission lines, we usually know exactly what, we, what wavelength the line has in our laboratories on Earth. Where the source of light is not moving, we can measure the new wavelength with our instrument at the, at the telescope. And so we know the difference in wavelengths used to Doppler shifting. Since the speed of light is a universal constant, we can then calculate the radial velocity of the star. So yun, pwede natin ma-calculate ma yung velocity ng star. So a particular emission in line of hydrogen is originally um, emitted with a wavelength of 656.3 nanometer from gas cloud. At our telescope, we observe the wavelength of the emission line to be 656.6 nanometer. So how fast is the gas cloud moving to toward or away from the earth? So, ito yung solution because the light is shifted to a longer wavelength. Red shifted, we know this gas cloud is moving away from us. Pag, pag red shifted, pag siya moving away from us. So the speed can be calculated using the Doppler effect or the Doppler shift formula given. So yun, V is equal to C times yun is equal to 3 times 3.0 times 10 raised to, neg raised to 8 meter per seconds times 0 0.3 nanometer over 656.3 nanometer is equal to 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 meter per seconds times 0 0.3 times 10 raised to negative 9 meter over 656.3 times 10 raised to negative 9 meter. So, we come up with the answer of 140,000 meter per second or equivalent to 140 kilometer per second. So ch suppose the spectral line of hydrogen normally at 500 nanometer is observed in the spectrum of star to be at 500.1 nanometer. How fast is the star moving toward or away from Earth? Because the light is shifted along to a longer wavelength, so the star is moving away from us. So yun, away from us naman yung star. So we are going also to use the same formula. Then equals to 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second times 0 0.1 nanometer over 500 nanometer is equal to 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 meter per second times the quantity of 0 0.1 times 10 raised to negative 9 meter over 500 times 10 raised to negative 9 meter is equal to 660,000 meter per second. So its speed is 60,000 meter per second. So yun, yun yung speed ng stars. So, yun. Mad madali na siya makompute yung um, Doppler shift niya, especially kung given yung, given yung mga, alimbawa, yung given yung C niya at ang V, or the uh, variable, the velocity, as well as the speed of light. Kung given siya, madali lang siya makompute kasi we are going just to sub substitute the given to the um, to the formula also given. So, yun, madali lang siya ma-compute, lalo na pag-given yung mga, um, pag-given yung mga dapat na kukunin. Yun. So, yun yung, yung tatlo kong, ano, yung topic ko, yung, una is the structure of atom, then the formation of spectral lines, and the last one is the Doppler effect. So I am going to give you the summarization of my topic. So the structure of the atom. Atom consists of a nucleus containing one or more positively charged protons. So all atoms except hydrogen can also contain one or more neutrons in the nucleus. So um, exception siya yung hydrogen kasi yung hydrogen 1 yung talaga, talaga yung uh, proton niya. So negatively charged electrons orbit the, nucle the nucleus. So yung mga negatively charged yung, yung mga electron is around siya sa nucleus. So nag-orbit siya sa nucleus. The number of protons defines an element. Hydrogen has one proton. Helium has two and so on of the atom. So nuclei with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons are different isotopes of the same element. So different yung isotopes nila. Kung yung yung kanilang number of protons and number of neutrons ay magkaiba. So, in the Bohr model of the atom, electrons on permitted orbits or energy levels don't give up any um, electromagnetic radiation. But when electrons go from lower levels to higher ones, they must absorb a, a photon of just the right energy. And when they go, when they go from higher levels to lower ones, they give off a photon. Photon of just the right energy. So the energy of a photon is connected to the frequency of the elect electromagnetic wave it represents by Planck's formula. So yung Planck's formula niya is E is equal to HF, which nakakonsan yung H is given na siya constant na siya. 
Next, we have the formation of spectral lines. When elements or when the electrons move from a higher energy level to lower energy level, photons are emitted and an emission line can be seen in the spectrum. So absorption lines are seen when electrons absorb photons and move to higher energy levels. So since each atom has its own characteristic set of energy levels, each is associated with a unique pattern of spectral lines. So this allows astronomers to determine what elements are present in the stars and the clouds or of gas and dust among the stars. So an atom its lowest energy level is in the ground state if the electron is in an orbit is in an orbit other than the least energetic one possible the atom is said to be excited so if an atom has lost one of more electrons it is called an ion and is called to be ionized so the spectrum of different ions looks different and can tell astronomers about the temperature of the sources they are observing and the last one is about the Doppler effect. If an atom is moving toward us when an electron changes orbits and produces a spectral line, we see that line shifted slightly toward the blue or its normal wavelength and a spectrum. So if the atom is moving away, we see the line shifted toward the red. This shift is known as the Doppler effect and can be used to measure the radial velocity of the distance distant object. So you knew mga about sa Doppler effect, sa structure of the atom and as well as the formation of the spectral line so um um i hope that i hope that my simple discussion so my my nuggets man po kamo or you have gained um knowledge from me and thank you for listening thank you for um giving time and for your patience for your presence i mean and I hope that you understand um, my topic. Even though hindi ko po siya na, ano, na deliver as in um, very, very good. But I did my best po. Um, thank you so much. And a pleasant day to everyone. I am Christine Emansayan. Thank you.